So, like I said, we're making Haddock on Papio today. This is episode 13, and as always, it is brought to you by Ashworks Cutting Boards, NT North Carbonated Iced Tea. And I have the oven on to 375. That's all I've done so far. But let's jump in. This is probably not going to be a very long episode today because this stuff is all fairly quick, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, so, what we're going to do... The very first thing we're going to do is actually make what's called a compound butter. It's, it's just butter with stuff in it. So we're going to put some parsley in it, some lemon, um, a little bit of thyme, some salt, pepper. You can put brandy or anything else in it that you want, but that's what we're going to put in ours today. And that's going to go over the fish once we wrap it up. Okay, so all I have here is about a quarter cup of butter. This is softened uh, to room temperature. And again, it's really hot in here, especially with the lights. Um, so the butter is pretty soft. Now what we're going to do is take a little bit of parsley. I've been picking up this parsley for a few days. That's why it looks kind of haggard like a picked chicken. But uh, that's okay. So we're going to add about two tablespoons of parsley to the butter. Okay. Now the technique we're doing today on papillote, we're literally just going to wrap everything and seal it in parchment paper. And we're going to bake it, and it's all going to steam in its own juices and everything. It's going to be really flavorful. It's going to be really, really delicious. Okay, so that's enough parsley there. I'm just going to chop this up really, really quickly. So all I'm going to do is just bunch this into a really tight little bundle, just like this, and then chop. Again, I'm just making sure to walk my fingers back as I do this so I don't cut myself. And then just once over, just make sure everything's about the same size. Okay, so parsley goes in the butter. Now, uh, we're actually going to put a clove of garlic in there as well because why not? So I'm just going to chop the end off. Crush, clove, and then peel. Ideally, comes right off just like that. Move that to the side. We're just going to give the clove of garlic just a really quick, rough chop. You know, hello, 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 everybody. Rough chop, and then we're going to add just a pinch of salt to it. And I'm, you guys have mostly seen this before, but that's okay. I'm just holding the handle of the knife off the edge of the cutting board. My knife flat against the board, and I'm just using the salt, just a little bit of salt, to puree the garlic. Okay, so just like that, we have pureed garlic. We're going to pop that right in here with our butter and our parsley. Hello Ella, hello Sue, good to see you guys, thanks for joining me. Okay, so in here we have a quarter cup of butter, about two tablespoons of chopped parsley, one clove, excuse me, of pureed garlic, and I'm going to add the zest of about half a lemon, we don't need the whole thing, so we're just going to go half. When you zest, zest into what you're using the zest in. If I zest on the board, I'm going to lose all the essential oils into the board, and that's where most of the flavor is, right? So we're going to zest directly into the bowl, okay? And we're only going to use about half, and as soon as we get to the white part, stop. It's very bitter. This lemon smells amazing. Well, it smells so good. Um, <laughs> sorry. The, the white part gets very bitter, it's called the pith, and even just the tiniest little bit in here will make the whole thing bitter. So just a very, very little bit. This is a very fragrant, fragrant lemon. It smells like, um, like lemon candies, like lemon hard candies, although, you know, it just smells like lemon. So I'm just going to roll the lemon around a little bit, cut it. Again, most of you probably know this already. 
huh? Instead of this way, I cut it north to south and just off center. Again, the reason being, we get way more juice. We're working with the natural structure of the lemon as opposed to against it. I keep telling you guys this, and someday there might actually be a test or something. Because I feel like I just tell you over and over and over. So I'm just going to add a little bit of time in here. I'm just going to grab the sprays from the top. Just like that. And pull down. And we'll do that again. So about three sprigs worth of time in there. And now I'm just going to mix this up. And you can see how soft the butter is. That's just been sitting out for about an hour. Just kind of room temperature. We mix. And this is salted butter and the garlic has salt, so we don't really need to add any salt to it. But I am going to add a little bit of pepper. And again, you can add a little bit of brandy to this. Um, a little anchovies are really good. Uh, and the good thing about this, uh, preparing butter like this, is you can add anything you want to it as long as it's not too wet of an ingredient and it freezes very well. Um, so you can make a batch of this, mix it up, roll it into like a log, wrap it in plastic wrap, roll it, and then freeze it. And then when you want it, just cut a few like medallions off it essentially, warm them up and then use them that way. Um, really good. Uh, I like to have them in the freezer in the summer. So you just whip them out, throw them on corn on the cob. It doesn't have to be this flavor, but something like this. You can throw it on corn on the cob, you can use it on bread, um, steaks, whatever you want. It's just a nice little extra and very, very easy to do. And I mean, if you're doing a full pound of butter, you can do this in a mixer, no problem. But we don't need to do that. And it smells amazing. Butter's done. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay, so the fish isn't gonna take that long. Either. My compost bin is usually over here. I know you guys have seen me like reach over here a few times or like go to throw something over there. That's because that's where my compost usually is. Uh, but I move it because it's just a really ugly bin. Um, and it's clear so it looks pretty gross. So that's, I had to go over there to get my compost. Uh, okay, so the fish is actually going to be really quick to cook. It's probably going to take 10-15 minutes. Um, if we wanted to speed that up, we could sear the fish first. We're not going to do that because I want this to be kind of, I want to use as few pans as possible. So the only two pans we're going to use is we're going to use one to kind of warm the sauce up. So we'll saute a little bit of, I'm going to use shallot, but you can use onion. So we're going to saute a little bit of shallot, uh, another clove of garlic, and just a little bit of butter. And then we'll deglaze that with white wine, and that'll make our sauce. So we'll pour that over the fish after we wrap it up. Okay. So once the fish goes in the oven, then we will make our savillon. Okay. So the savillon is, in Italian they call it zavignon or zavignoni, um, and essentially it's like egg yolks cooked with liquor. Um, often there's sugar added, but you can have savory savignon, like a hollandaise sauce is kind of like a savignon. And so what we're actually going to do we're going to make butterscotch first. So butterscotch is caramel that's made with brown sugar. Okay, so we're going to cook brown sugar. We're going to add some butter to it. We're going to add a bit of, of uh, bourbon. I have wild turkey bourbon. It's just what I have on hand. So I'll add some of that in there. Uh, we'll cook that until it's a caramel. Then we'll add some milk to it, which I have here. Um, and we'll cook that down. And then we're going to whip some egg yolks. And we're going to mix like the hot caramel into the egg yolks to cook them, then we'll finish it over a double boiler. So if everything works out, that should be about the same amount of time as the fish takes to bake. And the dessert's going to have to set in the fridge. Oven's ready. The dessert's going to have to set in the fridge for a little while, probably at least a couple hours to cool. So we're not actually going to get to see the finished product, but you'll get the main idea. You'll get the idea. Okay. So before we start the sauce, what I'm going to do is actually just clean these green beans.
I'm not going to need all of these because I'm only making two uh, fishes. But that's okay. So, for whatever reason, I know a lot of people have a tendency to cut off both ends of the green beans. Now, if they're slightly rotten, then yeah, cut them off. Excuse me. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, so this is a bad example because that's slightly rotten. Uh, also, a bad example. Okay, there's no, there's no good, good examples here. Here we go. So, uh, has this little tiny, like, kind of tail on the end and then the stem on the top. Tail's fine. You can leave that. You don't have to cut it off. Just the top. Saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort. Okay. And yeah, you can just line these up and do a whole bunch of them. But I don't really need them all. So that should just about do it. See, I just went for my compost bin. Okay. The other thing we're going to use is a potato. Uh, little peel, peelers here. Uh, I wrote two potatoes on the ingredients list, but I'm only going to use one because it's a decent sized potato and we don't need that much. And we don't need to par cook this or anything because we're going to cut it thin enough that it's going to steam with everything and cook in the package. Okay? So I'm just going to peel it. This is the really exciting part, I know. Peeling potatoes. If you guys had any idea how much of my life has been spent peeling potatoes, I think that it would blow your mind. But I don't know how much time it's been. It's just been a lot. Because when you first start in kitchens, these are the kind of jobs they get you to do over and over and over. You just peel vegetables for a very long time. Okay, so we'll go back over to my compost, which is off screen. I'm sorry. And now I'm just going to cut this. Um, we'll cut it in half first, to flatten it. It's always easier to cut when you have a flat base. You're going to cut it. Uh, about quarter inch thick, probably uh, about a half centimeter, I'd say. Okay, and just try and make sure they're all even. If they're not even, they're not gonna cook evenly. So you'll get some that are cooked and some that are raw and crispy, and you definitely don't want that. And we'll go with the same thing with the other potato. that and now I'm going to pop this here and rinse it in cold water. Now I just rinse that off and then I'm just going to let it sit. They don't really need to soak. Generally with potatoes um, for something like this, I'm just trying to rinse the starch off. The potatoes don't actually need to soak. Uh, so if you're rinsing them, you're rinsing them. Uh, as soon as the water starts to run clear, you're good to go. Okay, so we have our green beans, our potatoes are good to go. Let's take a look at our parchment. So, I already cut this one. Um, the easiest way to, to do this and to have everything fold properly is to cut your parchment into a heart. Now this is a very sad... This is a very sad looking heart, um, but it'll work. Any kind of like a circle's fine, an oval, anything like that. So all I did is folded this in half. Little arts and crafts here on Dinner with Ben today. Okay, and then we'll come down here. Okay, so we'll get rid of these. Now let's see how I did with this one. That's better. That's a better heart. Okay, so we have two parchments. 
So what we're going to do, once we're there, we're not ready yet, but once we're there, is we'll lay our potatoes down, we'll put our green beans down, um, might as well put a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme in there, why not? We'll lay our fish on top of everything, we'll put a couple dollops of the butter that we made on top, we'll seal it up, leave just a little tiny hole, we'll add our sauce in there, and then we'll call it a day. Or what we can do too is make this in kind of a bowl, so we'll put a bowl down, and then just kind of put everything in, put the sauce on, and then fold it. We'll decide when we get that. Okay, just gonna have a sip of water. As always, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. That's what I'm here for. So I'm just gonna use one shallot or a shallot, depending on you know your preference. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get this pan going, just over medium heat. Shallots are delicious, but they are kind of a pain because they grow in weird kind of shapes. That's all right. That's all right. That's okay. Hello, Trina. How are you? Good to see you. Okay. So, shallot. I'm just going to cut it in half. And then I'm just going to slice it nice and thin. And once you get to this point where it's really wobbly and kind of falling down, tip it over. Okay? No point struggling trying to balance something that doesn't want to balance. You're just going to cut yourself. And that's, that's, that's not good news. You don't want that. Okay? And we're going to use this whole shallot. So we'll do the same thing with this. And I don't know, I don't know if it's shallot or shallot, you know, it's like a you say tomato, I say tomato type deal. Say what you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, maybe cool garlic down here. The pan should be getting warm. I'm not going to bother pureeing this garlic, I'm just going to slice it nice and thin. Okay, so let's put a little bit of butter in our pan with that, about a tablespoon. Here, away from the heat. The butter's foaming. That means it's pretty much ready. We're just going to wait for it all to melt and then we'll add our shallots in there. And it's good to go. It's not browning. It's not so hot that it's going to brown or, or burn, but it's hot enough that it's bubbling uh, and all the butter is melted. That means it is good to go. So these aren't going to take long and we don't really need to cook them through because they're going in the packages with the fish. Um, so really we're just kind of softening them a little. And it's only going to take about two minutes and we'll have the garlic in there. And I don't know if you can see or not, but they're already kind of turning color or softening. So I'm actually just going to fire the garlic right in. Hello Laura, how are you? It's good to see you too. Thanks for coming. Thank you Trina. Glad to see you guys. Okay, so garlic and shallots. Garlic's not going to take long. We really just want it to get aromatic. As soon as you can start to smell it, you're good. And we have a little bit of wine. This is a Pinot Grigio from Chile, I think. Yeah, it's from Chile. This is actually a really good kind of cheap wine. Great for cooking, great for you know, drinking if you're not too world worried about it. So I'm going to add about uh, half a cup. Okay. 
If you don't have gas, if you're using a gas stove, don't pour the booze directly into the pan. Move the pan away and then pour it in. Otherwise, it's going to flame up on you. Hey, Mitch. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. A little bit extra wine. Never heard anybody. Okay. So we're going to let that cook down. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And the packages. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to drain the potatoes first. Okay. Like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to lay the potatoes down on the parchment, then green beans, then fish, then a little bit of uh, fresh thyme, because why not? And then we'll finish with the butter and the sauce. Now, it's really important that you don't do this ahead of time, because if you do, your parchment is going to kind of soak through and everything's going to fall out and your parchment will break and everything's not going to steam and it's, it's not really what you want. Okay? Uh, the wine and the shallots and the garlic, we're just going to reduce down until the wine's almost completely gone. So, first thing we're going to do actually is just a little tiny bit. Oh, I need olive oil. Just a little tiny bit of olive oil. I'm going to rub that all around, okay? Just like that. You're going to lay down some potatoes. Make it nice and even. Okay. So, we'll do like eight little pieces there. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay. Now we're going to put half of these green beans in here. Goes right on top of the potatoes. Just like that. A couple sprigs of fresh thyme. Okay. Now we have some haddock here. Put that. These are really small pieces of haddock, so I'm actually probably going to go two per package. Yeah, two per package. Okay. Hello, Carol. How are you? Thanks for joining us. So, in here we uh, grease the parchment a little bit with olive oil. Then we have potatoes, raw, they're not cooked. Green beans, a little bit of fresh thyme, haddock. And now a little bit of this lemon and herb butter. Three nice little dollops in there. Okay. So the sauce is good. I'll show you that in a second. So you can see there's still some liquid in here, but it's not it's not super wet. Perfect. So, I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to say, hello Gwen. I'm going to say that I'm terrible at this part, the folding. I don't know why, I always have been. Uh, all we're going to do is just start crimping. Just start folding the edges over nice and tight. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. Okay. You want it nice and tight so that your seal doesn't break. And just fold, fold, fold. Just like that. And then we've just left a little tiny hole in here. Just gonna go back and make sure this is all nice and tight. Because the last thing we want is for this to open. If it opens, it defeats the whole purpose and it's not gonna cook. Okay? So I just have a cast iron pan here. It's cold, there's nothing in it. And I'm going to put this just on the edge like that. 
and a spoon, half of our sauce, just into there. So the shallots, they don't need to be right on the fish, they're just going to add some flavor. It's okay. Just pop that in there. And then fold her up. And now ideally, we have folded this tight enough that it's not going to open while it's cooking. Because again, if it opens, it defeats the whole purpose. And then we're going to do that again with the second one. Again, a little bit of olive oil, which I need to buy. Rub that in. The olive oil is going to do a couple different things. Um, first, it's going to prevent anything from sticking to the parchment. Second of all, it's going to kind of protect the parchment a little from liquid, from the potatoes or any of the steam, which is good. Okay, so we'll just lay these in here, just like this. Okay. A little bit of salt and pepper on our potatoes. Okay. Green beans. Lay those down. Again, try and keep everything nice and tight, keep everything nice and even. Uh, Gwen asks if this is called poaching. Um, no, so what we're doing, this is, it's essentially steaming. So we're cooking fish and vegetables wrapped in parchment paper. They're gonna steam in their own juices. So this is called en papillot. It's a classic French preparation. But people do it uh, most commonly with like, um, when they're barbecuing, they'll use tin foil, and they'll wrap vegetables and make packages. Same idea. Everything's just kind of steaming inside, steaming in its own juices, all that flavor's getting locked in. And then like a, a really nice restaurant, if you got this, they would cut into it at the table. So you'd be sitting there, waiter would come over, cut into it, and all this steam and flavor would release right into your face. And that would be kind of the start of, of the meal. So this is more steaming than anything else, okay? So we have a little bit of time. We have our potatoes, green beans, salt, pepper. Fish is next. So a lot of water. Fish. And tighten that up a little bit. Okay. And now lemon and our butter. Hi, Barb. And we're going to put three nice dollops on there. Okay. And there's really not that much liquid in here, so I'm just going to scoop this over the top. And it'll be fine. Okay, you're welcome, Gwen. So now we seal it. So again, we fold it over, and then we just start on the very end and just keep crimping it down and sealing it as tight as we can. Okay? And the reason why you cut this into a heart shape is it just makes it much easier to seal. Much, much easier. Uh, if you do this as a rectangle, um, it, it's really difficult. It's kind of a giant pain in the ass, to be honest with you. So that's why we traditionally cut it into a heart. And you know, it looks really cool. It's really sweet. You know, great Valentine's Day thing. Hi, Barb. Thanks for joining us. So, all the way around. Make sure it's nice and sealed. Okay. Go back, make sure everything's nice and tight over here. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to pop this in the oven. The oven is at 375. That's going to take uh, 20 minutes. Um, if we seared the fish, it would take a lot less time. But again, I wanted to dirty as few dishes as possible. So we're just going to pop that in the oven. And it's it's kind of hard to tell when they're done because you don't want to open it. Um, opening it defeats the whole purpose again. So the trick is to kind of look at the paper and let the paper tell you. So when the paper is brown, 
and like kind of crunchy, that's usually when it's done. And we'll give it a little poke through the paper and kind of see the texture of the fish. But generally, when the paper looks done, the fish is done. Okay, so fish is in the oven. The next step is dessert. So we're going to make our butterscotch first. So like I said before, butterscotch is caramel that's made with brown sugar, essentially. So we just have a pot here. We have a quarter cup. Yeah. A very tightly packed brown sugar. And to this, we're going to add uh, two tablespoons of bourbon. bourbon. So this is wild turkey bourbon. Doesn't matter what kind of bourbon you use. Um, it smells delicious though. Uh, and I'm going to add two tablespoons. Now, a quarter cup is four tablespoons, so I'm just going to add half of this in here. Okay. Cork back on here. And then we're going to put this just over kind of like a medium heat. We're going to let that kind of cook down for a few minutes. Now, a sabignon, or sabayon, like I said, is generally eggs, egg yolks, um, sugar, and booze of some kind, usually like a sweet wine or something like that. Um, it can be served either really firm, almost like a pudding. It can be really light if you uh, fold egg yolks in, or egg whites into it, mix that whipped egg whites like a meringue into it after it sets. Uh, it can be a warm drink. It can be served hot or cold. So there's a lot of variations on sabayon. But the technique is very important because it's like making hollandaise sauce. It's pretty much a very similar idea. Um, and so the one we're going to make is we're going to make our butterscotch and then we're going to whip that into our egg yolks and then we'll cook uh, that over a double boiler. So we want to we want to make our caramel first, which is what we're doing. And to do that, we are going to cook our sugar. So caramel is just cooked sugar. Um, when you're cooking white sugar, you can tell more by the color when it's done. With brown sugar, it's a little more difficult, but that's okay, it's not impossible. When we put the booze in now, because the booze actually, um, it helps to kind of start the caramelization. Any liquid, it just makes it easier to start the caramelization than if you're just using dry sugar. Um, it's a little safer. Uh, so, it's already boiling away, the sugar is already melting. And it's bubbling. So what I want to do is completely cook off the, the bourbon. I don't want any liquid left. I just want pure sugar, and then we're going to cook that down. Now, I can't really move the pot around too much because what will happen is the sugar will kind of gather around the edges of the pot. And the, and the sugar on the edges of the pot can crystallize, and if it does, it can seed the rest of the sugar and crystallize the whole batch. And it will invert the sugars, I think it's called, and it crystallizes it and just turns the whole batch to shit, essentially. Hey Joel, how's it going? So I don't want to move the pot around too much. Um, yeah. I'm working on getting a second camera so I can show you this. But, uh, you can see. I'll just be very careful. So I'm hoping you can see that. My camera's on a delay, so I don't know if you can or not, but you get the idea. So the bourbon is just about all gone, and to that I'm going to add a nice bit of butter. I'm going to add about uh, two tablespoons of butter, and this is kind of room temperature butter. And stand back. It didn't go as crazy as I was going to. That's okay. So now I'm going to swirl in the butter. And the butter does a couple of things. A, it slows down the cooking process. Um, it's what we call shocking. So we bring the sugar right to the point, pretty much right to the point of burning. And then we add, add something cold to shock it and kind of cool the cooking process down so the sugar doesn't actually burn. Hello, Crystal. Um, and then the butter also just adds really nice richness and flavor to that. And we 
butter has a lot of water in it as well, so we want to cook the liquid out of the butter and just kind of get the fat in there too. Oh, it smells good. It smells real good. And then we're going to add a little bit of milk to it as well. You can use cream. Cream's probably a better idea than milk. Um, but we're going to use whole milk. You definitely... Hi, Crystal. Hello, Suze. Uh, you definitely don't want to use like a 2% milk or a skim milk because it's going to split as soon as it hits the heat. Um, homogenized milk or whole milk has a high enough fat content that it should be okay. Cream is a better option. Now, while well, that's cooking down, I'm just going to give that a little stir. So while well, that's cooking down, the liquid's cooking out of the butter, we're just going to get our eggs ready. Now, on the... Um, hold on, I'll push it On the ingredients list, I said two eggs, I think, but we're actually going to use three egg yolks instead of two. Um, just because I wanted it a little thicker than what I had originally thought. Yep, so we're going to add the milk in here. I almost burnt my sugar. It came very, very, very close. I'm just going to add a little bit more milk. So we have about a half cup of milk in there. Hi Jack, how you doing? I'm just going to put this back over the heat. Just let that cook down some more. And the milk, like the butter, it shocked it to cool down a little bit and prevent it from burning, which it almost, very much almost did. Um, but it also adds flavor, adds richness uh, and texture. kind of see, hopefully that's going to help, you can kind of see maybe the color of this, see, so we're just going to cook that down let it all come together. Okay, egg yolks. So what we're going to do, I find the easiest way to separate yolks and whites is just to break the eggs right into the bowl. Like this. And then just scoop the yolks right out. I find that if you pass them back and forth uh, between the shell, the shell is really sharp and just uh, very likely you're going to break the yolk. This way, very, very rare that you would actually break the yolk unless you nicked it with the shell when you're breaking the eggs. Okay, so we don't actually need the whites, so I'm just going to set them aside. That's almost done. And so... I'm just going to take... I'm going to trust the egg whisk. I'm just going to whisk this up a little bit. And so in here, all we have is brown sugar, uh, wild turkey bourbon, nice bourbon, uh, butter, and milk. And that's it. So essentially, this is a bourbon butter scotch. And we're just cooking all the liquid out of it. We don't want uh, liquid in here. We just want the, the caramel and the eggs. Okay, so here are these guys. Okay, so that's perfect. So we're going to do is we're going to do what's called tempering. So we're just going to add little tiny bits of this at a time. 
If we add it all, it's going to cook the yolks and we're going to get scrambled eggs. We don't, we don't want that, right? So we're going to add just little bits because this is really, really hot. Little bits of it and then mix it in. So we're trying to gradually raise the temperature of the egg yolks as opposed to raising it all at once. This way, as opposed to the eggs scrambling, they're just going to thicken and that's going to thicken our sabayon. I'm just going to add little, little, little bits until it's all incorporated in here. And as we as we add it, the temperature rises, and then we can add like a little bit more each time. Make sure you get all of this out of here. You don't want to waste any of it. Okay. And now all we have in here is our bourbon butterscotch and our eggs. Okay, so we'll mix that all up. And I'm just going to rinse this pot out. We're going to use this for a double boil. So we have about an inch and a half of water in here, just to about there. I'm just going to bring it to a boil and we'll reduce the heat on it. Oh, that looks really good. The fish is starting to smell good. The parchment is just starting to turn around the edges. So it's probably another 10 minutes or so, and that should be good to go. And as soon as the water's hot, we'll put the pot over it, and we'll start whisking this. Now what we can do, if we wanted to, is we can actually take the whites, whip them, and then once this is done, fold them in, or let it cool and fold them in, and then it'll give us a really nice light texture. Um, I'm not going to do that though. I'm just going to whip this a whole bunch as we're cooking it, trying to get as much air into it as possible, and that's going to kind of lighten it. Um, we could also just add some yolks into it, or some whites into it, or have left some of the whites with the eggs, um, and it would give it a kind of slightly lighter texture. There's a lot of different ways to make savillon, um, a lot of different things that you can do with it. This is just one of many, uh, but it's a really, really good, really simple dessert really great over berries or anything like that. And it's my hope that this is going to have kind of the texture of like, of like a butterscotch pudding is what I'm kind of hoping for here. So more like a custard than anything else. So that's just starting to get hot. I'm going to put this over it. And now we're just going to kind of whisk for a little while until it starts to thicken. Actually, as soon as it starts to boil, we can just bring it over here. Pop it right down. So at this point, the yolks really are pretty much cooked because the sugar was so hot going in here. But we still want to cook them a bit more. And by doing this, we're actually going to be able to whisk some air into it and lighten the Sauvignon off a little bit. And it's already thickening up. That's great. So as soon as that starts to fully boil, I'm just going to pull it off, put it over here, and then I can just kind of do this over here. Okay. So now we just whisk, 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 whisk. And again, you want to get as much air into this as possible. If you had an electric beater, you'd use that. I always prefer to do stuff like this by hand. That's just me. 
Now, I don't know if you can see that. Um, you can see that it's already getting thicker and lighter. If anybody have any questions, this is a good question time because I'm just going to be sitting here whisking for a few minutes. Whisk, 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 whisk. I should say this now, next week uh, there will not be an episode of Dinner with Ben uh, because it is Thanksgiving weekend and I actually remembered that it's a holiday this time. So no episode next week, but there will be an episode the week after that. So look for that. Uh, Sue asks if you could put this on gingerbread. You absolutely could. 100 um, percent what i would say though because it's going to be pretty thick um, is put this in a ramek and let it set and then kind of sprinkle gingerbread over the top and then eat it like that that'd be really good fish is getting there this is getting there Just whisking, you know, just whisking, guys. Oh, also, I guess I should also say. Uh, Friday morning at 7.15, I will be on CTV and I'm talking all about, uh, what am I talking about? Um, uh, Thanksgiving Day side dishes and how you can kind of save some time and, you know, not go crazy on Thanksgiving. So check that out. That's Friday at 7.15 a.m. I'll be on the morning news show. Yeah, that's if you're, if you don't get enough of Ben, you can get some more Friday morning. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I'm going to put this back on the heat. My water got a little too cold. And we whisk, we whisk, we whisk, we whisk. I always say that doing this stuff by hand makes it so you don't have to feel guilty about eating it because you're burning off so many calories when you make it. That's, that's it. <laughs> there should be more to that, but there isn't. Now I'm just making a mess. That's alright. That's okay, that's okay. So it only needs about another two minutes over boiling water. We just gotta get that water hot. The fish is very close, it smells really, really good. What I like about doing the fish like this is there's really no dishes, right? Like you're not dirtying anything. You're barely even gonna dirty a plate. Thank you. 
Okay, water is boiling again. We can come back over here. My wife says that she's looking forward to dinner when she gets home, if there's any left. <laughs> there will be some. So close. So close, guys. So close. So what we're looking for is called a nappe. Okay. What we're going to do dip a spoon in, run our finger across. If that line stays, it's good. And it very much did. So we take this off here. We don't need that anymore. A couple of ramekins. And just make sure you don't waste any of this stuff. Okay, so this just has to set for at least an hour. You want it to cool fully. So I'm just going to, I can't get to the fridge because it's blocked by lights, but we're going to pretend that I'm putting this in the fridge. Let it set. Really, really good to finish it with a nice dollop of whipped cream. Uh, it kind of cuts through the richness. Otherwise, it's really, really, really good. And like I said, once it's cold, you can take it out of those ramekins, whip the egg whites, and then fold them together. And then you get this really nice kind of light butterscotch mousse, uh, which is really good. A lot of different things you can do with that. Now we're just going to check our fish, which I think should be pretty close. Pretty close. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And the, so... So, the parchment is tight, this one's a little looser, but this one, when I first poked it, it was like a balloon, right? Like it was, you could feel the air pocket in it, which is perfect, that means they sealed properly. So I'm just going to pull this back over here, turn the oven off, clean my apartment down, and we're going to grab a plate. So this is kind of the exciting part. So in here, we cooked everything, right? We cooked our potatoes, our green beans, we have that little bit of time in there, our fish. Everything is cooked right in the package. So there's very little mess. Now we're just going to cut this open. And you smell. That's, you know, that's the good stuff right there. And now you can see Turn that around for you. You can see the steam coming off here. Everything is perfectly cooked. The potatoes, everything's good. Hopefully you can see that. Let's give it a taste. So and just in case you don't believe me on the potatoes, I can barely pick it up because it just keeps breaking on me because it's so well cooked. Beautiful. So, just go over this again, what we did. Is we put raw potatoes on the bottom, sliced very thin. Uh, then we put some raw green beans, a little bit of fresh thyme. And then we put uh, some haddock. Our herb butter, which we made with room temperature butter, 
a quarter cup of room temperature butter, two tablespoons of chopped parsley, a little bit of fresh thyme, the zest and juice of half a lemon and some salt and pepper, and a clove of garlic. And then we added our shallots that were cooked down with a little bit of garlic and white wine. And this is beautiful. The green beans are cooked. Beautiful. They're not mushy, so have a slight crunch to them, but they're soft. Beautiful. So guys, there you go. It's a pretty quick episode, just under an hour. So we have haddock en papillote and our butterscotch Sauvignon. Sauvignon. So this technique you can use for anything, any kind of fish. Um, you can do it with pork, you can do it. I've done it with ribs, it works really well. All kinds of stuff. Very easy. Again, we only dirtied one pan doing this. Everything else was contained in the package. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. And like I said, there will be no episode next week because it is Thanksgiving Monday. But I will be on CTV on Friday morning at 7.15 if you want to check that out. I'm talking about uh, how you can kind of ease some stress with your side dishes for Thanksgiving. And all week on the blog and the podcast, it is Thanksgiving themed, so check that out as well. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to my sponsors, Ashworks Cutting Boards and T-North Carbonated Iced Tea. Thank you to everybody. I'll see you in two weeks. Have a good one.